I love this stuff. I do. I, I love still playing with Play-Doh. I, I don't know about you, but Play-Doh is, is awesome. Excuse me while I just play with my Play-Doh for a second. Is that okay? I love, I love Play-Doh. You know, Play-Doh's interesting. It was actually created in Cincinnati, Ohio in 1930. And since then, people have been playing with Play-Doh. But it really can be two ways. L let me explain. If you take care of it, it can be like this. It can be soft and pliable, and you can mold it, and you can shape it, and you can form it, and you can change it into whatever you want it to be. And if you make something that you don't like, you can change it into something that you do like. Let, like, let me give you an example. So, we've all done this. I want to make a... O. Oh. Everybody say O. Oh. O. Oh. Oh. But I don't, I don't like the O. Oh. So I want to make it into a set of lips. How about that? <laughs> Probably not my best look. But my point is, you can change it into whatever you want it to be. And if you don't take care of it, however, it can be like this. It can get hard and get stale and it can break easily, and it kind of loses its freshness, and you can't really use it for what it was created for. You know, God, in the Bible, it describes him as the great potter, and it says that we are like Play-Doh or clay in his hands. And I was thinking about that. Everyone in this room, we're probably in one of these two categories that if we don't take care of ourselves spiritually, we can become hard in our heart, our faith can get stale, we are not willing to change, we'll be who we've always been, we'll keep doing what we've always done, and if, if we're not careful, we just break easily and we fall apart. But who I want us to be, T.E. Church, is I want us to take care of ourselves spiritually. And come on, I, I don't expect perfection, but I want us to be pliable because that way God can continue to mold us and continue to change us and continue to form us into who he wants us to be. Come on, let's make sure that our faith stays fresh, that, that our hearts don't get hard. And, and here's my hope throughout this series. We're going to be talking about God forming you and me to ultimately be more like his son, Jesus. That through the end of the series, I'm going to encourage you, don't miss one week of this series. It's going to be really, really good. And, and our hope is by the end of this series, we'll be able to look back and say, wow, God formed me to be more like his son. Hey, let's pray as we get started today. Father, thank you in advance, God, that we would be a people that are pliable, that our hearts are opened and soft, God, that we're open to change and being changed. And that, Jesus, ultimately, you would make us more like you. God, help me. Help them. We pray it in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen and amen. So I want to talk to you today about some of the ways that God will form us to be more like him. And I want to start with this thought today. He forms us for family. God forms us for family. We were created for community. We've been formed for family. And I believe, watch this, the church is a place where followers are found and formed. And whether you've been in church all your life or today is your first day, God not only wants to find you, he wants to form you into being more like Jesus. And let, let me pause and say this. Last week in our church, we had 209 people that were lost but got found at TE Church. And that should, like, fire you up. 
Like 200 and nine, check this out, check this out. What a great problem to have. We gave away 150 Bibles last week. We ran out of Bibles. We had to get more Bibles. Isn't that great? That, that's incredible. But we are formed for family. We are connected and created for community in God's house, in the church. And there's a term in the New Testament, ekklesia. It's used 140 times. It's a Greek word. And it refers to people that have been called out and assembled together. And 90 of those 140 times, it talks about a body of believers that actually gather together and do what we're doing. It talks about those people being formed to be more like Jesus. And listen, you can say what you want about the church, but God formed me in the church. It was in the church where I learned to become a man. It was in the church where I learned to become a better husband. It was in the church where I learned what it means to be a father. It was in the church where I learned what it meant to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these other things would be added unto me. It was in the church where I learned not to be offended. It was in the church where I learned to stand firm and not run away as soon as something didn't go my way. It was in the church that I learned about forgiving people. It was in the church where I learned about God's mercy and God's grace. It was in the church where I learned to be a leader. Can I keep talking about how the church formed me? Come on, it was in the church I learned to be a warrior. It was in church where I learned how to fight my battles, not from up here, but from down here. Come on, it was in the church that God showed me what it looks like to reach lost people. It was in the church where I could get planted and not run away the first time something didn't go my way. It was in the church that I learned about generosity. It would break the cycle of greed and what it meant to bring the tithe. It was in the church, watch, where I was found. It was in the church where I was formed. And it's in the church where we get a family. Come on, God formed us for family. And the, the second thing is, watch this, he formed us differently. God created everything and everyone but he created everyone differently than he created everything. Let me, let, me, let me break this down. Let me say it again. Watch this. God, we know, created, he's the creator of all things. God created everything. But how he created everything is different than he created everyone. How he created everything is through the power of his word. Watch this. The Bible said God spoke and things cr were created. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. He said, let there be, and there was. What kind of God do we serve that can speak and things happen? And we are made in God's image, which, which reminds me that we better be careful how we talk. <laughs> because our words weigh a 1,000 pounds. So God speaks, and everything is created but not everyone is created because God did not create, create us with his word. Watch this. God formed us with his hands. That's how important you are to God. Watch. His fingerprints are all over you. God formed you. Here's what the Bible says in Genesis 2, verse 7. And God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. I want to talk to somebody in the room that you felt undervalued and underappreciated. That maybe you look at yourself in the mirror and you don't like what you see and you think that you really don't matter and that it's been kind of tough for you. And I just want to tell you, God did not make a mistake when he made you. Amen. That like your ancestor, listen, you, you can't ever expect to become something if you think you've come from nothing. Your ancestors did not crawl out of some pond as a two-celled creature. Your great 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 grandfather didn't have a tail, maybe on your wife's side, but not your side. Come on, you weren't made on an assembly line. Come on, God formed you, He formed me, He formed us for family wonderfully and uniquely. Look at Psalm 139. It says this, for it was you, God, who created my inward parts. You knit me 
together. I don't know if anyone in here knits. I, I've never knitted anything, but I've seen people knit, and oh my gosh, it is so intense. It is this and this and this and this, and I was thinking about what it would look like when God was knitting me, and he was probably like over here and like trying to, <laughs> trying to get it all together, but that's all right. He, he knit me, watch this, together in my mother's womb. I will praise you because I have been uniquely and wonderfully made. Maybe right now is a good time to do what the Bible says and give him praise. Come on, somebody, because you've been uniquely and wonderfully made. He didn't make a mistake when he made you. He knew what he was doing when he formed you. Come on, somebody put your hand. Somebody get on your feet. Come on back, row. Stand up with me. Come on, somebody. You got breath in your lungs. God's got a plan for your life. He made you uniquely, wonderfully. Tell, tell somebody beside you, say, I knew you were different. <laughs> Just tell them. I knew, I knew you were different. We were all intentionally created, watch, to have different personalities, different dreams, different desires. No one in this room is exactly, think of all the, the billions of people on the planet, and no one is like you. Come on, God formed you with his hands. He formed us for family. He formed us differently. And the next thing is this. He forms us with and through people. If we went around the room today, I think we could all agree that to some degree we are all products of our environment. That what we grew up in and who we grew up with and our parents and the culture and our situation help shape us into who we currently are. But let me also say this. I was thinking about this. I don't care if you lived a life of devastation, if your life's been an abomination, if you don't have any education, or you've got a bad reputation, my God is still a God of transformation. And if you will remain pliable in his hands, I don't care where you came from, I don't care what your background looked like, I don't care about what came to you. It doesn't have to go through you. Come on, stay pliable in God's hands. Woo. And he'll continue to form us. And watch this. And how he forms us is with and through people. God will use people, this side of heaven, to help shape you and me to become who he wants us to be. The Bible says this in Proverbs 27 17. It says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Amen. Listen, being around the right people isn't just a good idea. It's a God idea. God's plan for you and I is to get around people that won't stunt our growth, but will sharpen us up. That's right. That's right. And you got to get around the right people to make this happen. I'm just telling you, people matter in your life. Your, your circle matters. Who you're around absolutely matters. And you want to be around. Listen, God's plan to form you is with and through people. And you've got to decide, are the people around me making me better? And if they're not, you need to get, today is a good day to decide, I need some people that will not step on me, but will sharpen me, that will help me get to the place that God wants me to go. And I, I believe, listen, 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 listen. I believe with all of my heart, there are pe people that I call kingdom connections. And these are people that are angelic assignments to you. That before the beginning of time, God has picked out certain people that he will assign to you. That you're going to need to help you become the person that God desires you to become. And be really careful when these people come, because watch this, these people are sharpening you. They're not just patting you on the back. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about sharpening you. And it, be very careful that when these people come into your life, you don't get your feel bad on, and you don't get offended, and you don't get hurt, and why are you telling me what to do, and who are you to tell me this and that? And I, I'm just saying, keep your ears and your heart open. These could be kingdom connections that God has called you to so that you can become more like Jesus. And you're going to need these people in your life. Listen. If you have a personal trainer, 
You don't need a personal trainer that says, hey, go over there and lay down. And let, let me just get you a bag of hot Cheetos. You just lay there. Let me turn TV on. And you just watch the TV. And, and let, me, let me get you like a, a six-pack of yingling. You just have a few beers. And you lay over there. And you, you hang out. No, what, if you've got a personal trainer, you need somebody that's going to challenge you to start lifting, to start doing things that you normally wouldn't do. And what I'm telling you is I'm not your personal trainer, but God has assigned me to be your spiritual trainer. And I'm going to keep pushing you, and I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep encouraging you and challenging you to do things maybe that you wouldn't do unless I spoke it into your life. So what does that mean? I'm going to keep encouraging you to serve. Because listen, somebody, you weren't saved to sit, you were saved to serve. God has called his people to serve. And at TE Church, it's not about one person doing everything, it's about everyone doing something. So make sure that you're not hard and brittle and I'm not going to change and I've never served before. But come on, you're pliable, God's still forming you, God is changing you, God is challenging you to say, man, I need to get in the game because listen, hell is real. Time is short and the stakes are way too high. We need to get in the game. I'm going to keep challenging you to give. People say, oh, don't talk about money. People get funny when they talk about money. Well, listen, if God talks about it, I'm going to talk about it. So let, let's just get used to it. Because what that means is if you're struggling with it, it means that's an area that, that you need broken of that you're kind of still holding on to what God's given you. And I don't know what your thing is, but I'm telling you, we've all got a thing that God wants to help us get over that thing so we can be more like Jesus. Come on, am I talking to anybody today? Does this make sense, what I'm, what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm going to keep... And what you perceive to be agitation, God could be using for education, and you just didn't realize it because God's the only one that can take you to school when you wouldn't even know you were in class. It's all part of being formed. It's all God using us and molding us. He's the potter, and we are the clay in his hands. And we just need to be reminded that he uses people to do this. Amen? Amen. And here's what I want to spend the remainder of our time on today. This is my last point. He formed us on purpose for a purpose. Yeah. And maybe you're here and you're trying to figure that out. You're like, I don't, Pastor, I don't know my purpose. Like, why am I here? Uh, I don't even know, like, like, my existence. Does it really matter? And you have to be careful because some people confuse um, what they do with who they are. In other words, some people com confuse their occupation with their purpose. And the two aren't necessarily the same, although God can use your occupation. Let, let me explain. What if I told you that... Your occupation isn't a place that you were called just to go and make money. Maybe your occupation is a place you were called to go and make disciples. He can use all of it. Let's start with this, Jeremiah 1.5. God said, before I formed you, in the womb, I knew you. Listen to me. You weren't a surprise to God. You might have been a surprise to your parents. <laughs> Checking a little stick. Woo, didn't see that coming. You listen, you do that, y'all. That's what happens, by the way. That's a different message for a different time. But, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, you weren't a surprise to God. God knew everything about you. God knew what you would be like. God knew what you wouldn't like. God knew what you wouldn't want. God knew the struggles that you would have. God knew the situations that you would get in. Come on, God knew the mistakes that you would make, and he formed you before the beginning of time in spite of that. In spite of that. Before I formed you in the womb, he said, I knew you. I knew every detail about you. Now watch this. Next verse. Before you were born, I set you apart for my holy purpose. I think people get this confused. Some people are looking for a purpose. I get that. But you will never fully be satisfied in this life until you understand not only do you have a purpose 
Come on, you got a holy purpose. You've got a ho- God wants to use you in a way to help build his kingdom. Every person in this room, I want you to think about that. You've got a holy pur- There is something greater that God wants to use you for than potentially what you've ever even dreamed or imagined. And when you finally get that, I'm telling you, that's when you're going to start to go, this is what I was created for. This is the lane that God has called me to. I've been trying this, and I want to tell you, there's no job that will give you a holy purpose. There's no drug that will give you a holy purpose. You say, i got to have her, or i got to have him, or if I lived here, or if I did this, or if I did that, and you get all those things, you're still not satisfied. That's because that's not a holy purpose. But when you find that holy purpose, I'm telling you, something's going to come alive in you, and you're going to go, this is the thing I've been looking for. This is the thing I've been dreaming about. This is the thing that's bringing me satisfaction, that's making me feel like, oh, man, finally, finally, this is it. A holy purpose. Look at the next verse. I appointed you to be a prophet to the nations. Because you've been appointed, you've got an assignment. And your assignment is complete when your purpose is fulfilled. Amen? Amen. That's, you'll, you'll finally get it. You'll quit looking. You'll quit saying, I'm trying this, I'm trying this, I'm trying. You'll go, this is it. This is it. I get it now. Can, can I preach to somebody today? Can, can I preach to, Listen to me. God formed you to do what he would need you to do long before you ever knew you needed God. Y'all, you didn't get it. Listen to what I'm saying. God needed you before you needed him. When you were out being jacked up and messed up and tore up from the floor up, God still knew that I've got something for this person. They just don't know it yet, but there's going to come a time when that light bulb is going to go off and they're going to go, whoa, man, I get it. Now I get it. That God created you to do something long before you even knew God. Watch, now stay with me, listen. Everything you've been through to this point, he has allowed because it's all been part of your purpose. God will allow the worst things to happen to you to bring out the best things in you. He, He allows it, he doesn't cause it. Some people go, did God do this? No, 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 but he allows it because it's all part of the forming molding process that God's a God of watch this formation through transformation he's he's changing us to be who he wants us to be Let, let me give you an example of this everything that you've been through to this point has been allowed because God wants to use it for a greater purpose we have a couple in our church that lead our united marriage ministry sitting here in the in the front row Keith and Shelly Baum. And yeah, you can give it up for those guys. And what maybe you don't know is a few years ago, Keith and Shelly's marriage was almost over. I mean, they, they hit, a, hit a space that it could have very easily been done. And there were mistakes made. Okay? And I know people go, well, why would you let These people who have been through this in their marriage be the people to lead your marriage ministry. Let me me tell you why. Because who is better equipped to help people that are going through a difficult time in their marriage than a couple that have been through a difficult time but said, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep leaning into God and I'm going to keep trusting Jesus and I'm going to keep believing that God can heal this thing. And that I'm not going to let the enemy have a foothold in my life and in my marriage. Who is better equipped than people that have been through it? There are people in the room, maybe you've been through a terrible sickness. You've been through something. And what I'm telling you, God didn't cause it, but he will allow it. Because you're going to have an opportunity to talk to somebody and say, Hey, I know what you're going through, man. I get it because I've been through it. Let me tell you what I did. There's people in the room, you've been in an addiction. And and the world looks at you one way, but my God doesn't look at you the same way the world does. Because what the enemy meant for evil, who am I preaching to today? The, The Lord can use for good. And you'll be able to talk to somebody that's going through the same thing that you went through. 
and say, let me show you how my God showed up and showed off and got me through this thing. And I'm just telling you, this is who God is and what God does. Listen, he had a purpose for Moses, and Moses, Moses was a murderer. He had a purpose for David, and David was an adulterer. He had a purpose for Rahab, and Rahab was a prostitute. He had a purpose for Abraham, and Abraham was 99 years old. He had a purpose for Mary, and Mary was 14 years old. He had a purpose for Peter, and Peter was a liar. He had a purpose for Thomas, and Thomas was a doubter. Come on, he had a purpose for Lazarus, and he was dead. I mean, he was their God, but he's my God too. Come on, he was their shepherd, but he's my shepherd too. He was their king, but he's my king too. He was their healer, but he's my healer too. He was their savior, but he's my savior too. And he had a purpose for them, but he's got a purpose for me too. And he's got a purpose for you too. He's the God when you're on the mountain and the God when you're in the valley. He's the same God. Both places. When, look, when things are good, he's God. But look at me. When things aren't good, he's still God. He's still the same God. He still has a great purpose for your life. What if God has allowed everything in your life, think about this, up until this point, it's all been part of the planning process and preparation for your purpose. Everything that you've gone through, everything that has happened to you, has been preparation for what you were created to do. Let me, let me put it like this. What if today you realize that nothing has been random? Nothing. The tears, the heartache, the joy, the celebrations, the people, the positions, none of it's random. It's all on purpose. Now stay with me. Watch this. God is a God of the also. Your purpose has an also. Let me, let me explain. I believe with all of my heart, I am doing what I was created to do. I, I, am, I am pastoring the church I was called to pastor. I am preaching, and I, I was called to do this. But I want to tell you, I didn't always just do this. I did some other things also. Can, can I tell you about this? God also had a purpose for me when I was 16 years old and looked ac across the room at school and I saw an unbelievably beautiful blonde five foot ten girl that I thought heaven had just stepped down into my path. And God also knew that I would never be able to be the man that God called me to be without the woman that she is in my life. And God also knew I would be a knucklehead, and I would do stupid things and give her every reason to leave me, which she did. And then God also knew that she would marry a knucklehead, and they would get divorced, and then four years later, come on, we would get back together. And we've been married for 30, almost 35 years. And then God, watch this. God also knew that I would be far from God, but he also knew that he would use Pastor Linda to help bring me back to the Lord. See, God also knew that our first daughter Betsy one Sunday morning when she was three years old would come and tug on my pillowcase and say daddy come to church and God also knew that that Sunday with my background being in music music I was a professional musician in entertainment that that Sunday that I went to church there just happened to be randomly a gospel quartet that was actually very very good playing music that caught my attention God also knew that somebody in that quartet would be the man that would mentor me and help lead me to the Lord Jesus Christ and then God also knew that because of my background in music when we planted this church that the music at TE Church would not suck come on that we would have the greatest worship team on the planet God knew it but God also knew 
I would do some really stupid things. God also knew back in the 80s I'd have sex with a lot of women that I really cared nothing about. Just use them and throw them away. God also knew that I would get involved in drugs. God also knew that I was so incredibly selfish and all I really cared about was me, no one else. As long as I got what I wanted, the way that I wanted, when I wanted it, I was happy. But God also knew that every one of those moments, if I would just put them in his hands, that God could begin to mold me and change me and make me into who he wants me to be. And here's the point, listen to this. God doesn't cancel your purpose because of what you did. What you did becomes part of your purpose. I said what you did becomes part of your purpose. And who better to tell a church full of broken, jacked up people about how good a God is than a broken, jacked up person that God did a work in his life. He's a God of the also. We're almost done. Romans 8, 28, popular verse. And we know, everybody, everybody say, we know. We know. We know. We know. Say it like that. We know. we know. Tell your neighbor, we know. Less and less people know. I can hear. Say, say we know. All right. <laughs> Watch. That in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. But wait, everybody knows verse 28. Can I read you verse 29? He's a God of the also. Those whom God had already chosen, he also set apart to become like his son so that the son would be the first among many believers. Here's the last thing. What if everything you've gone through is all so you can be more like Jesus? What if ever, think about it, everything you've gone through, the cancer, the heartache, I can just go down the road, doubting a purpose, mental health, I just keep going, losing a loved one. It's all so. We can be more like Jesus. And let, let, me, let me end with this. Can I encourage you? Here's what it says in Philippians 1.6. Being confident of this, he who began a good work in you, <laughs> he who began a good work in you will see it through to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. He's still forming you. He's not done with you. He's still, you're still, come on, a, a work in progress. Come on, stay pliable. Stay soft. Stay open to change. Come on, he's not done with you yet. Don't waste today's grace because of yesterday's shame. Let me say it one more time. Don't waste today's grace because of yesterday's shame. God has a holy purpose for you. And I believe today, as we start this series, listen, don't miss one week of this series. People are going to find out. God formed me for family, formed me differently, forms me with and through people, and God formed me on purpose for a purpose. Let's pray together. I would ask that you bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, thank you that you're a God that knows us so well and still loves us so much. And I want to talk to you for a minute. Just keep your heads bowed and eyes closed, please.
Um, I, I don't know what you've been thinking and I don't know what you've been going through and maybe you're in the room and you felt like your purpose was disqualified because of a bad decision. And I want to tell you that the thing the enemy meant for evil, God will use for good. And you don't need to be ashamed of it. You need to say, this is what I did, but it's not who I am. I made a mistake, but I'm not a mistake. I made a mistake, but I'm not a mistake. And if that's you today, with every head bow and every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to just let God speak to your heart for a minute. And you need to get healed from this. You need to get healed from this thought that God can't use you. Okay? Just, just let that go, man. Just let that go. Well, I'm not a church person. I just started coming to church. Listen, this is exactly the kind of people God uses. God doesn't use the people that have it all together that are self-righteous. God uses people that are pliable, open, soft, say, God, here I am, use me. So that, that's my hope for some of the people in the room. And, and with your heads bowed and eyes closed, I, I want to talk to the people that really have been searching. And, and maybe you're like, man, God, I know that there's more. And, and if that's you today, and you're like, okay, pastor, I heard you today. God spoke to my heart. And there, there's more. And I don't know what that looks like, but I'm telling you, a holy purpose is building the kingdom. It's that simple. And we can build the kingdom in different ways, but we're all called to be kingdom builders. So if you're in the room and you're like, okay, God, I'm, I'm gonna get real right now. And God, I'm, I'm gonna get vulnerable. Use me to build your kingdom. God, in spite of every flaw that I have, in spite of what I don't know, in spite of my lack of experience, in, in spite of my reputation or lack of education, and, and you say, God, use me. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I want you to put your hand up right now. God, use me to build your kingdom. Just put your hand up. Put your hand up. Hands going up all over the room. God, use me. Hands still going up. Awesome. Come on, let's, let's build. Now. At TE Church, we want to be kingdom builders, man. Hands up all over the room. Father, you see our hands lifted. Our hands are lifted to the heavens. God, I always believe this is a holy moment where you reach down and touch us. And you're reminding us that you are a good God that has a good plan and a good purpose for our life. And God, we know that last week was, was Easter and the tomb was empty, but it's still empty today. And because the tomb is still empty, we can declare and believe, come on, that the best is yet to come. Come on, I declare that over your life right now. It's not about where you've been. It's not about what you've done. Come on, the best is yet to come. God's still not done. The best is yet to come.